Hello friends, welcome to our channel Radiology Counselors. So today I will be talking about some things uh, which are very important in MRI monitoring and as we know these are the topics which are least covered in the residency. So first I will be starting with uh, keeping in mind with the history of the patient who is coming in MRI. So you have to first ask the history and uh, if, if the patient is coming for MRI spine and there is history of trauma. So if in any history of trauma you have to take STIR sequence first so that you can know the exact area of pathology and accordingly you can tailor the axial sections and this will even save time if you are taking whole spine T2 then it will waste time and then again you have to take uh, T2 STIR uh, so that is problematic thing so first uh, only take a STIR and you will get to know where the area of trauma or any edema is there and you can mm, accordingly take T1 or T2 whatever you like you know, axials or whatever uh, at that exact position and similarly if any other condition where you are suspecting edema then you have to take stir sequence the other thing which I got to know very late in my residency was like um, if the patient has come with a history of uh, uh, transient global amnesia that is if the patient is telling you history that he has forgotten something uh, for a very brief period of time that what he was doing or he has put something and he totally forgot that he has only put then you can suspect this clinically that it is transient global amnesia and the thing which you have to tailor in this is that you have to take uh, DWI uh, at uh, with the diffusion weighted imaging uh, with the higher value of ADC it is uh, around 2000 and then uh, what findings you will get is like there will be multiple areas of restricted diffusion along the hippocampal uh, hippocampus area so this is very very specific for the his uh, for this history and then you can diagnose also so even I had called the patient again I had to call the patient again and take the uh, this diffusion at higher values so uh, this is very important thing and there are uh, other things also like in spine only if we are saying that you are seeing any of the meds in the brain which uh, cause drop metastasis then you have to know if it's astrocytoma or medulloblastoma or any other tumor which is causing drop metastasis then you have to cover the spine then uh, coming to another sequence which is space or uh, which is heavy t2 weighted and you can call uh, many people call it cis also so there are many uh, places which where you take cis sequence like the first thing is uh, you take in new cystic sarcosis in brain uh, to differentiate even with tuberculomas or any other pathology we have to take to see the scolex or if it is in subarachnoid space then also you can find it very useful in that the other uh, conditions are like uh, in any cystic region of pancreas in tumors cystic tumors of pancreas uh, to demonstrate the connection in IPMN or even in other biliary conditions um, like colidocal cyst or multiple biliary uh, cystic lesions are there in the liver so this is helpful uh, cyst sequence is helpful in this condition even in brain if the patient has come with a history of giddiness then you can take uh, cyst sequence uh, covering the 7th 8th nerve and uh, other thing with multiple sclerosis we have to take uh, 3D flare sequence which is very important as uh, this can show the minute changes of MS which are seen in pericalosal lesion and there will be hyper intense lesion in the uh, these subcortical cortical and pericalosal lesion even many centers they take uh, inversion recovery sequence that is double IR sequence in that you can say uh, see uh, very minute changes of MS also uh, the other sequences are to be taken of uh, optic nerves like uh, coronal stir then uh, thin op for optic nerves thin axials also you can take uh, similarly uh, what I want to also if the history of hypertension is there like if a young female who is coming uh, with complaint of uh, headache then you can suspect um, idiopathic uh, hypertension then in such conditions you will find in MRI there will be dilatation of the optic nerve the sheath will be dilated and there will be empty cella and in such condition you have to take axial images which cover the uh, optic nerves and in this T1 uh, thin sections T1 covering the optic nerve is very important as you can see uh, where the optic nerve meets the retina you can see that there will be indentation within the in the globe region and clinically which you will see the uh, ophthalmologist will see that it is the papillary edema which is seen 
in MRI as indentation within the globe. So that is important. The other sequence is the same. Uh, you have to take uh, coronal stern to see the optic sheath enlargement. The other thing is many times in pediatric population is the uh, for any condition you are doing spine of the pediatric patient then you have to see we miss mm, the tonsillar herniation even I have missed many times and then the patient is intubated the pediatric children they are given general anesthesia then you have to call the patient again again the anesthesia has to begin then that becomes a uh, very uh, problematic thing so in the first go only see the brain whatever the brain is covered in the spine cervical spine you have to see if there is any tonsillar herniation you have to cover the brain similar condition happen in adult pa pa patient like you are seeing in spine and if cerebellum is covered and cervical spine then many times you see that there is metastatic lesions which you uh, were not able as you were seeing the cervical spine then again uh, while your consultant sees and then you have to call the patient again to uh, scan the brain because there were metastasis there might be other lesions also in the brain so see to that and uh, other thing which i would cover is like um, in uh, hypotension similarly like hypertension many times you will see uh, bilateral dural effusion will be there and when you uh, take this sagging of the brain stem these all signs you will find but many times when you are taking post contrast images then there will be dural enhancement so we get confused as the patient has come uh, with headache or whatever and you see dural enhancement then you get confused that why is there is lot of enhancement within the dural is it any lymphoma is it any uh, like uh, metastasis has come or even neurosarcoid or anything but the simple history of like uh, uh, if the person has got CSF puncture and CSF was removed then uh, this can uh, lead to uh, such kind of venous congestion uh, within the dura and you can see enhancement so simple thing is ask for if any dural puncture has been done other uh, thing which I would like to include in this even in many cases of skull base uh, lesions in uh, like ex for example skull base osteomyelitis is there then we take uh, we have to take non fat set because in non fat set we will find the pathology very well and that has to be taken because if you take fat set images then you will miss many of the pathologies so that is very important thing uh, to remember take a non fat set image in skull base osteomyelitis or anything when you are uh, looking for skull base uh, lesions and, and the other thing is uh, many times in flare imaging we find uh, the CSF is very smudgy uh, or dirty looking CSF is there. So just yeah, don't, uh, we can think of meningitis in such cases but just a simple history that the patient has, uh, is going uh, through is intubated or is taking uh, oxygen that, uh, that can also lead to similar appearance. So there are many things uh, which have to be covered but these were the important thing which I have covered. Hopefully this will be helpful to you and thank you. Thanks a lot. Please like, share and subscribe for more such content.